Support for this program is provided by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting and from viewers like you. Good evening and welcome to Louisiana Public Square. I'm Beth Courtney, president of LPB. And joining me to explore the issue of sports betting is one of LPB's current news anchors and a former sports that reporter, right. Andre yeah. Moore, a while back, huh? Yeah, a while back, <laughs> Beth, thanks. It's great to be here. Uh, you know, the month of March marks the beginning of spring as well as the nation's collegiate men's basketball championship. Followers of this year's March Madness will include 47 million adults wagering eight and a half billion dollars during the NCAA tournament. Sports betting is currently legal in eight states and it's being considered by more than 20 others, including Louisiana. Efforts in the legislature to allow sports betting failed last year. This session will see a renewed push with some lawmakers suggesting dedicating the state's revenues to early childhood education. So what are the pros and cons of legalizing sports betting? And how much revenue could the state hope to see? Over the next hour, Louisiana Public Square asks, what are the odds? Sports betting in Louisiana. In May of last year, the Supreme Court ruled that sports betting is allowed in all 50 states. Since then, there's been a race among state legislatures to legalize it. Today, there are about seven states that are fully in, the entire states are fully in on sports betting. You have some isolated sports betting at some tribal casinos, and in probably 20 other states, it's being debated right now. Ronnie Jones is chairman of Louisiana's Gaming Control Board. He says neighboring Mississippi is among those states with sports wagering already up and running. I think in the, uh, the first five months that uh, it was legal over there, somewhere between September and December, the, uh, the amount wagered was in the neighborhood of $160 million. In fact, the 12 casinos along Mississippi's Gulf Coast brought in more money last year than they have in the past decade. In Louisiana, riverboat casinos saw revenue drop nearly 5% in February compared to last year. While sports betting isn't a huge moneymaker compared to other forms of gambling, Jones says it's used to attract additional income from non-gaming activities. There are a lot of people who may not have been inclined to go to a casino before and play blackjack or poker or a slot machine, but they are inclined to go spend some time in a sports bar, place a couple of bets, have a meal, have some cocktails, maybe spend the night. If I was a betting person, I would say this will pass. Representative Joseph Marino and Senator Danny Martini are introducing sports betting proposals this session. Senator Martini will be bringing again uh, the sports betting bill that he brought last session. Uh, and that bill generally uh, authorizes a new form of gaming in Louisiana that would have to be uh, put to a statewide election and it would be voted on parish by parish. A statewide vote in November, which legalized playing fantasy sports games online for cash prizes, passed in 47 of Louisiana's 64 parishes. Fantasy sports fans will have to wait to place their bets until the state determines how to tax and regulate it. Under Martini's current bill, sports betting will only take place in brick and mortar establishments. I think our initial intent right now is to start with the, the facilities that are already licensed for uh, gaming, which would be your land-based casino, your 15 riverboat casinos, and the four racetracks that uh, have slots in them right now. Total of 20 locations are, um, in the initial bill. The American Gaming Association, an industry group, estimates tax revenue from legalized sports betting in Louisiana could be 52 to 62 million dollars per year. Where this money will go remains to be seen. There's been a lot of talk already about wanting to dedicate it towards early childhood education. Uh, I've also had some people contact me to say we want to dedicate that strictly to infrastructure. Um, but the initial version of this bill is going to start out with this money going into the state general fund. It's a bad bet for the state of Louisiana. It's a bad bet for the families in Louisiana. And it's bad for children. Gambling's only product are losers. 
Gene Mills is president of the Louisiana Family Forum. The group says it is committed to defending faith, freedom, and the traditional family. Among Mills' objections to sports gaming is that it further expands gambling's misleading business model. We tell people, play every day and get lucky every night. That's not true, but nobody's called them on that. There's a depreciation of their promises in terms of what they return on their investment to the communities, and there's an impact upon families, upon individuals, and upon businesses and communities that the revenues do not nearly offset. Mills also cites a 2016 study by the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, which found that over 200,000 residents experienced some problem with gambling addiction. And ask anybody at DCFS or, or uh, Department of Health and Hospitals, does the Louisiana incur the cost of those families who impact those 200,000 families? And they will tell you absolutely, and it's a steep price. Another opponent to legalized sports betting is the National Collegiate Athletic Association, or NCAA. The group was one of the losing parties in the suit brought before the Supreme Court last May. The NCAA is very concerned about the integrity of their sports, the integrity of their athletes. Paul West is an attorney who specializes in casino gaming law. He says high-stakes gambling can create situations where a student athlete may be lured into altering a game's outcome. This happened to a Louisiana College basketball player charged with point shaving in 1985. It was at Tulane University that actually shut down their, um, their program for some, I think, close to 10 years. Uh, a, a fellow named Hot Rod Williams was indicted, I don't, and, and two or three other people on the Tulane team. Williams was charged with several counts, including accepting bribes, but ultimately was found not guilty. Wes says other critics see sports betting as the further exploitation of college players and their amateur status. They're not making millions of dollars that they are making in the NBA. And again, here we are betting on student athletes who are too young to even make a bet. Um, and some people think that's an abuse and that's taking advantage of these young college students. No matter what type of sports gaming legislation is proposed, Jones says the gaming board won't take a position. But from a regulator standpoint, the public is always better served in a regulated gaming market compared to an unregulated market. And there's a huge unregulated market in Louisiana today. Now helping us explore the issue of sports betting is our studio audience. It includes members of the LSU Sports Law Society, the Louisiana Family Forum, the Shreveport-based Association on Compulsive Gambling, and also two sports betting aficionados. We also have two high school students from New Orleans with the Legislative Youth Advisory Council. So we want to welcome everyone for being here. Two national surveys were conducted just prior to the Supreme Court decision allowing sports betting in states other than Nevada. And among their findings, when asked their thoughts on making betting on professional sporting events legal, 55% of respondents approve, 33% disapprove, and 12% gave no opinion. According to a Washington Post poll, a majority of Republicans, 52%, Democrats, 57%, and Independents, also 57%, they say they want to legalize sports betting. And when it comes to the top three age groups of sports bettors, 25 to 34 year olds top the list. Of these, 73% are men, 38% are women. The second largest group is a 35 to 44 year olds. Of these, 52% are men, 33% women. And the third most popular age group are the 18 to 24 year olds, 44% males, 33% females betting on sporting events. So those are some of the national statistics. Let's start, uh, start now with your thoughts and hear from your perspective or experience. What are your concerns about or benefits to allowing sports betting in Louisiana? And let me start with Janet. Uh, Janet, you're in from Shreveport. We have two people in, in the audience from Shreveport tonight. So uh, tell us uh, your thoughts, concerns, <coughs> and who you're representing tonight. Well, I'm re representing Louisiana Association on Compulsive Gambling. And our um, organization provides statewide services, a statewide uh, problem gambling helpline number. We answer that as well as a substance abuse number and suicide prevention. Um, who and why I'm here tonight because I'm interested in this point going forward with legislation to open the door for sports betting in Louisiana. 
and um, looking at ways that we can protect anyone who may develop a problem or who already has a problem in Louisiana with sports betting. This is something you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis when you go into the office, in fact. Right. So do you find as uh, other casinos open or truck stop casinos, do you find you have more people coming in for help? I think that um, research shows that where there is the availability and accessibility of anything that could develop an addiction, then we will have that. And Louisiana has um, shown us that, that we have a, a lot more, of, we have 19 properties, but we have over 1,700 video poker licensees, and, and that's without all the other um, tribal reservations and the different um, casinos with them and bingo parlors and all the different avenues of gambling. So the point being for us is to advocate to be responsible to people. That obviously, um, statistically, there are more people that gamble who don't develop a problem, but those who do develop a problem, we need to be responsible to them in Louisiana and take care of our own. All right, Jenna, thank you very much. We have a psychologist in the group tonight. Richard, uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts, concerns. Well, I'm not opposed to gambling. I gamble, but conservatively. Uh, my question deals with those college athletes. I graduated from a college that was rocked by a scandal back in 1950, City College of New York. Yes. Mm -hmm. And their players were pressured by the gambling uh, industry to uh, shave points, as was mentioned earlier in that video clip. What would be done to protect college athletes from these undue pressures that undoubtedly will be put on them? Okay, Richard, thank you very much. Uh, Royal Alexander, you're also here from uh, Shreveport tonight, representing who and your thoughts? I'm, I'm an attorney in Shreveport and I'm here as a guest of Louisiana Family Forum. And I, th I didn't even realize some of the things Janet had just said. I, I wasn't aware even of the suicide help that they gave. And you know, I'm glad that you're in Shreveport. It makes me proud of that. We know of the enormous social cost that is a part today, unfortunately, of the, the gambling gaming industry. And as we heard a few minutes ago, a lot of that is, is borne by our social agencies in this state. And th there's no way many times to recover those funds, but even putting aside the enormous social costs that uh, at usually attend the, ga the gambling industry in the way that we have seen, there are so many fabulous natural resources in our state. The oil and gas industry, agriculture, health care is an ever-burgeoning field. There are so many others, in, in my view, and I think in the view of, of many others, so many other really stable, solid, reliable sources from which to develop our economy. I mean, we're talking about economic development, especially in our state. We, we are a poor state. And I, I've never believed that that has to be. I believe it's because we haven't always perhaps had the best leadership and haven't always developed some of these natural resources. So I think that we can't, I think gambling is a mirage. I, I think it w disappears, I think it's fleeting, and I think we have to build our state economy on something stronger than that. Okay, thank you very much for that. Sure. Uh, man sitting beside you, Michael, may have a different opinion. Sure. Michael, tell us who you're representing, who you're with. Well, I'm, I'm a sports betting uh, supporter. Okay. Uh, I'm, not, I'm recreational. I'm not a professional. Um, but I think the question for the state is, you know, we've created an industry of gambling, gaming in the state that has 100,000 100, jobs, um, affects a lot of economies around the state. Is it, is it too late to, to put that horse back into the barn? And we're, we're putting ourselves at a competitive disadvantage economically with other states, especially Mississippi, who has passed uh, casino gambling. And when we passed our casino gambling, we put ourselves at a disadvantage by requiring, first limiting our licenses and requiring that our boats cruise and not have uh, land gaming space. But we've corrected that. So now that Mississippi has passed their uh, sports betting, you know, we're at a disadvantage. We're losing tax revenue uh, the you know the the gambling enthusiast who wants to go place a bet is going to go to Mississippi um, so we ought to recapture that and by recapturing some of that revenue we can dedicate some of the money to the compulsive gambling programs that need to be funded that are currently underfunded um, and then the biggest question if we're going to pass sports gambling which s the experts seem to think we are 
then we need to take a competitive advantage over Mississippi and pass mobile gaming because that's where three quarters of the bets are made. So that is where three quarters of our revenue will come from. If we don't pass mobile gambling, uh, gaming on sports, then we're losing revenue and we're putting ourselves back to where we were at a competitive disadvantage with Mississippi, who is going to pass mobile gaming this year. Okay. We've got uh, students from college, from high school, also another counselor. We will certainly get with all of you in a moment. I I'm curious about this uh, group here on the front with the LSU Law School. And Catherine, why don't you just explain um, what is the class, what is the, the part of the LSU Law School that you guys are in that brings you here tonight? So we're all uh, members and board members of the Sports and Media Law Society at LSU to just help people gain interest jobs in the sports and the media aspect. Um, me personally, I'm not opposed to sports betting. Um, I think it's a great revenue generator for the state. Also, we already allow betting and gambling at a certain level, so adding that additional little sliver of sports betting to me is not a detriment to society or such a bad thing for the people. And then what Richard was saying regarding the NCAA, I think that the NCAA already has issues with compliance with players taking money from boosters or working or things of that nature, and they kind of solve that with just education. And I think the same thing could be done if we allow sports betting with the players so to make sure they're not like shaving points off the of games and okay. things like that. Lance, a word? Uh, yes, I'm actually a sports gambler myself. I do it recreationally and I, I enjoy it. It can be very fruitful for the state as my counterparts mentioned previously. And I know she hit on that it has effects on certain people, but people are doing it in the state illegally anyway. So we already have that problem going on in the state that is not being funded, which it could be. And also another part, people are, are going to Mississippi and doing it. I happen to be someone who has, and I have numerous amounts of people that I know that do it. So I think it's a really a terrible thing that we're getting revenue sent to Mississippi when we can actually profit off of that. Okay, um, let's talk to one more briefly. Matt, uh, a counselor, we have 50 seconds. Well, I've been treating compulsive gamblers for 22 years, and we find that there's a lot of problems that's associated. I'm not against, but we need, if we're gonna pass this, we really need to have things in place. We need, we have halfway houses for mental health, substance abuse. We need halfway houses for compulsive gamblers when they come out of treatment, have nowhere to go. They need to put more revenue into treatment. We need another inpatient facility. So if they're gonna approve this, we have to be able to meet the needs of the people. That's all we have. Uh time for, for this portion of our show, but when we return, we'll be joined by a panel of experts to discuss the odds of sports betting in Louisiana. Welcome back everyone to Louisiana Public Square. Tonight we're looking at the issue of allowing sports betting in Louisiana. And joining us now is our panel. Senator Danny Martini is a Republican from Metairie who will be reintroducing legislation this session to allow sports betting in the state. An attorney, Senator Martini is the longest continuous serving Republican in the Louisiana legislature. Will Hall serves as director of the Louisiana Baptist Convention's Office of Public Policy and the group is opposed to the legalization of sports betting. Elizabeth Crisp is the Capitol reporter for the Advocate newspaper and its online site. She covers higher education, Louisiana politics, and state government. And she was recently named the publication's Washington, D.C. correspondent. And Major Charles McNeil serves with the Louisiana State Police's Gaming Enforcement Division. Major McNeil's department regulates and controls all gaming entities in the state. Before we go to our audience questions, I'd like to first ask each of you from your perspective and what you've reported on, what you've prepared for, I should say, what are the odds that we will see legalized sports betting in the state? And let's begin with Mr. Martini. That's a good question. I mean, I, uh, I, I think it has a pretty fair chance of, of passing. Uh, you have to understand there's a lot of different moving parts in this, in this city. Uh, the uh, it's an election year. Uh, a lot of the support for the bill has to do with the dedication of the funds to different entities, and a lot of legislators don't want to vote to dedicate any more funds. But I believe that based upon what I have heard, and I understand the opposition to the bill, but from the people that I have talked to, uh, while they were not in favor of it last year because we were wrapped up in our fiscal session uh, and, and what they called the fiscal cliff, not, uh, and, it was, and it got killed before before the uh, 
the Supreme Court ruled. Since the Supreme Court's ruling, I have nothing, no, I've heard nothing but support for it. And uh, I think it's got a fairly good chance of passing. All right, Mr. Hall. Well, I, uh, I think that we're going to put a spirited effort to defeat it. I know that. And uh, there are a lot of reasons to oppose uh, expanding gambling in Louisiana. But I, I'd like to put numbers to it because, you know, we're right now going into a budget session and we're going to talk about the impact of the decisions on the bottom line for Louisiana Baptists or for Louisianans. And, uh, and I got to tell you, last year when all the sports betting and all the bills were coming through, they were talking about gambling adding $900, $900 million to the bottom line uh, for the budget. But what that was not mentioned was the cost on the other side. We have about 275,000 gamblers, addict, uh, addicted gamblers in the state, 275,000. 96,000 of them are pathological gamblers. And just on that 96,000, nearly 100,000, they cost the state between 800 million and 900 million dollars a year in social costs, which is a wash uh, when, when you talk about what the other side is saying is added to the bottom line uh, for the budget. And that doesn't include the 176,000 other problem gamblers. And there are some costs that aren't even accounted for because representing a faith community, I can tell you that the state pushes off a lot of costs to the churches who have to pick up the pieces of broken lives and fragmented families uh, that result because of this a gambling addiction. So okay. we're really concerned about that. We're concerned about the moral issue, but also the bottom line issue for the state and the budget. All right, great. And in a moment, I'll ask you more about that spirited effort that you're going to have. Elizabeth Crisp, your thoughts? Um, well, I obviously I don't like to try to predict what anything the legislature is going to do on anything. I try to remain kind of nimble because you never know what will happen in that building. But um, as Senator Martini said, there are a lot of moving parts to this. Um, anytime you open up a possible new channel of money um, in the legislature, everybody has a issue that they think that it really needs to be dedicated toward. I know we're hearing a lot from a lot of people from the governor on down. People think that this is something that needs to happen um, to put Louisiana casinos on a better um, competitive field with say casinos in Mississippi um, but one thing also to remember is all the proposals that we've seen so far would go as a referendum to the public so even if it did make it out of the legislature this session it likely would go to a vote of the people so there's also um, that part of it to consider too. Okay Elizabeth thanks a lot and uh, Major your division what are you guys preparing for in the event of this passing? Um, what we've been doing is, is meeting with other states that have passed it in the past, uh, the states that are currently passing it or working to pass it, uh, talking to those regulators in those states of, of how they're regulating, what, they've, what problems or issues they face in putting this together, what things we need to be prepared for in Louisiana when the state police work with the Game Control Board and AG's office are, if this is passed, is tasked with uh, the job of regulating for the state and for the citizens of Louisiana. So we've tried to be proactive in that sense to know, uh, to be able to provide uh, information to the legislature when we're asked in, in the session of issues of concern that we may have and to provide that information so that we can give everybody a better perspective of what it is and what it mean for us to do. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, we appreciate it. Prepare yourself to answer a bunch of questions because <coughs> they are coming from our audience. And I'm going to start uh, as we begin our questions uh, back to the LSU Law Center. And Christine, we didn't hear from you the first go around. What's your question? Um, so I have spent you know extensive time working in college athletics, both in a compliance standpoint, also for the Tiger Athletic Foundation. So I've seen both sides of you know complying with the rules. Um, so obviously the NCAA has a huge stance you know against sports betting. Um, what are the challenges? as you see with you know complying with their regulations and rules if this does pass and you know especially a big football school like LSU you know what challenges would we see that we'd have to regulate then to make sure you know student athletes are staying eligible and also like boosters are not making illegal contributions to certain funds you know potentially that might happen so is that to me anyone can take it I think I Senator, why don't we start with you <laughs> it's we're not we're not legal well we are regulating sports betting but if anybody who believes that, that by killing my bill or, or not passing sports betting, it doesn't need anything, it exists. And the same problems that the NCAA has right now uh, in dealing with, with, with people approaching, uh, approaching athletes, uh, it's, it's still going to exist. I would question, and I don't, know, I don't know who put up this bill that said that it was going to generate $900 million. Uh, that may be with, with, with gaming 
uh, provides toward the budget now. Yes. But I will just tell you that sports betting, uh, the way that I have always described it, is that it is that it's nothing more than an amenity to cut off the ability of Mississippi and Arkansas and the Indian casinos to, to cherry pick uh, our, our gamblers. We're still going to have the problems that, that, that everybody's mentioning that with problem gamblers. The problem we have now is they go to Mississippi. And when they come back here, we have to treat them. Bad people are going to do bad things, no matter as many laws as you pass and as many rules. You know, I can't tell you that nobody's going to ever try to bribe a basketball player, but, but it exists right now. It existed 20, uh, whenever the Tulane scandal was, before we had regulated uh, gaming in the state. So it's going to happen. And people like uh, Mr. McNeil and, and the state police are going to regulate it. Elizabeth, you have a follow-up? Um, yeah, so this was one of the key points of the Supreme Court uh, case against this, not just the NCAA, but also um, the professional leagues. Um, that was their big question, is what happens to the integrity of their sports? So we haven't seen any states actually um, agree to do this, but I expect that the Louisiana legislature will be lobbied just like other state legislatures have been lobbied by the leagues um, to implement some sort of what they call an integrity fee, which they say will then let them implement certain types of programs. Uh, one of the things that I, I recently went to a conference where they talked a lot about this, and uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting is, you know, they want to be able to not breach any personal data, but be able to access data when there are irregularities to see if possibly there is some sort of um, scandal going on there if they start noticing, you know, uh, certain people winning a whole lot off of a certain team, then that can prompt the NCAA or so, you know, they would transfer it onto the leagues and then the leagues would be able to investigate that on their own. Let's head back to our audience now and uh, our two youth advisory uh, students here with us uh, this evening, Danielle and Livia. Uh, haven't heard from you yet, but so now the floor is, is yours. Why don't we begin with Danielle. Danielle, what's your question? Hi, my name's Danielle. I'm from LIAC. So my question is, first and foremost, um, is this kind of a first step proposal that they're setting up? Is there a plan to expand into sports bars, expand into those online poker things, or is it going to stay just in these brick and mortar areas? And if it does expand to the online platform, how are you going to regulate and keep this sports gambling out of the hands of us minors? Well. I can only speak for myself, and, <laughs> and I am term limited, so this is my swan song. Uh, my intention is to, is to hopefully pass a bill that mirrors the Mississippi bill. Uh, I can't tell you that if, if, that, 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 that if there's an adult that wants to log in on his app, uh, on, on the gaming app at a particular venue and let his 16-year-old son bet on it, that, that, that you can stop that. Obviously, that's illegal. It would be my intention to make sure <coughs> that, that the gaming, even if it's mobile gaming, takes place inside the brick and mortar where, where we authorize them. And it's up to the state police to set forth those areas. So we would do that. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't tell you. I, I can tell you that the conferences that I have been to, mobile gaming, mobile gaming is, uh, is, is the thing of the future. So I'm not going to tell you it's not going to happen. Uh, uh, New Jersey has it now, and if you're, if you, and if you log in on your app and you're not in within this, the uh, the uh, confines of, of the state of New Jersey, they've got a, it kicks you right off. Uh -huh. Major McNeil, you certainly this is something you prepared for. <laughs> well, you've heard all the yes, questions. And well, this one. Uh, you know, to your point of mobile, or, you know, you know, the one of the problems there is now is there's mobile now in this state. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's illegal. Uh, in our research, we found that there's over 100 websites in the state that you can go onto right now, typing in Louisiana sports betting, mm -hmm. and place bets in offshore accounts. You know, so that is a concern always for us because realistically, we have no authority to go to Antigua or any of these other countries that may be having these these sub websites for us to regulate. So, whether the legislature goes to a mobile or not mobile, unfortunately, right now it is something that's here that we cannot regulate. And there's a term geofencing. Yes, sir. So explain what that does, and also uh, fantasy sports passed in some parishes, not in others. How do you handle that? Uh, well, first off, the the legislature is going to have to enact the, the laws and how they wish it to be regulated in the state. Um, I did meet with uh, one of the companies that does do the geofencing, and uh, they're the company that actually does it for the state of Pennsylvania right now. Can you explain what that is exactly? Just because this this is basically sure, a word sure. that is uh, not in the vernacular, really. So what it is is they use, uh, and I can't. I'm, I apologize. I don't know the four 
points they use, but they use four points off of your phone, one being the phone location, cell tower, and there's other two, other two um, items. And it, it is such that within a foot, they can tell you, put your machine on or off if you're in an area. So it blocks you from using or? You, 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 can, you can log in as long as you're not in the area where, it, mm -hmm. as long as you're in the area that is allowed. If by the time you get to an area that it is not, that's not, that is not allowed, yeah. it will not let you place that bet. It blocks you from doing that. So the geofencing uh, is, is being done. Uh, actually, Louisiana is now geofenced. Uh, the whole state is blocked by DraftKings and uh, FanDuel and those companies because it's not been approved yet by the legislature. They showed me the technology, but it would be simply them turning it on in and off of those parishes that, that would be uh, that's been approved in the state, which there's 47 parishes that voted for the, uh, that allowed uh, the uh, fantasy football, fantasy sports here in the state. All right, Mr. Hall, you've got to comment on this. Well, Daniel raised a really important point that we need to drill down on, and that is the impact on youth. The Picard study, which I partially cited earlier, which was done at the request of the legislature and was issued in 2017, dealt with a lot of different issues. And one of the issues they talked about was the impact of gambling in our state now on youth. And I can tell you that the latest numbers they had, 41% of 6th graders, 44% of 8th graders, 41% of 10th graders, and 34% of seniors are gambling now. And, and that's with all the restrictions we have on preventing access of children to uh, uh, different gambling situations. We are, every time we loosen the reins on anything, alcohol, pot, whatever, it makes it more accessible for our youth. And until we find a way to protect our youth, we should not step off into this area. I, we're ruining the future for our children. We are creating a vortex in this state that is sucking the promise out of the future for our children and grandchildren through gambling and some of the other issues that we're, we're just uh, being lax on, quite right. honestly. Thank you, sir. Um, we've not heard from you, Olivia. What's your question? All right, hi, I'm Olivia, and I'm representing Legislative Youth Advisory Council. Um, Elizabeth, you talked earlier about um, the integrity fees that organizations like the NCAA would impose on the revenue. My question has to do with that. So to what extent would the NBA or NCAA, things like that, have a claim over the revenue generated by these taxes? Um, so yeah, that's a good point because I think uh, similar to geofencing, integrity fees are not something that a lot of people are familiar with. What the leagues have been pushing for is for the casinos to actually pay that to them so it would not be um, gaming revenue that the state would otherwise get. It would cut into the casino's profit um, that they would get from it. Whatever the legislature sets our tax rate on um, sports betting would not be touched by those so-called integrity fees. Like I said, nobody has actually approved that. Um, and uh, there have been people who have very strong thoughts about, you know, why do these, you know, corporations that make millions and millions of dollars every year, like, deserve a cut from this, you know? Are they already not profiting enough from, you know, people watching and um, continuing uh, just, uh, you know, you, you think about how many more fans do you drive to sports if people start betting and things like that. Um, but yeah, the integrity fees is separate from what the revenue coming to the state would be. Okay. Mr. Bachock, I want to ask you, you've been listening to the discussion so far. How are you viewing this differently from what you're hearing people say? And then also ask your question. Well, I mean, the questions are very valid and, and pertinent to the, to the situation. A couple of things about the geofencing, I can personally attest that it works very well <laughs> being uh, I was in New Jersey and was on an app that was and I was using a DraftKings app uh, and then went to New York and it was immediately kicked off and then when I try to log on here in Louisiana it won't let me do that uh, I hope that's you know the case for for when we geofence uh, Louisiana um, and then for the you know the NCA question about oh, are we going to ruin you know the the sport or the integrity or how are we going to protect our athletes as Mr. Senator Martini said I mean this has been you know we have it now there are people and as the state trooper said you know there are hundreds of thousands of people in Louisiana right now that are betting on sports what the regulation of sports betting will allow us to do is the state police to investigate the trail of bets when they're made and when they're irregular so that we can find out where that money was bet who was betting that money and if it's irregular compare it to normal betting patterns so that we can protect our athletes and protect our programs i certainly think that the nca and lsu should you know have some sort of revenue generated to them because they're going to have to hire new people um, to educate their their student athletes and to regulate that do you have a question also? Well, my question is, is 
to towards the mobile uh, um, aspect of the bill, Senator. I know that it's not in your current bill. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that we're going to pass a bill, hopefully, and I'm happy that we will, that will be on par with Mississippi, but Mississippi is currently considering and is likely to pass a new mobile uh, access bill to their sports betting. Is that going to place us at a competitive disadvantage? Well, let me just say this. I My goal is to allow us to compete on an on a even playing field with Mississippi. As it stands right now, Mississippi has mobile betting, b gaming, but you ha it has to be within the facility that's licensed. I, I just want to, I want to pass the bill to allow us to compete. I can't tell you what Mississippi is going to do. I know that the Mississippi legislature killed all out mobile gaming uh, for this year, so it may come up next year. But uh, I'm, I'm trying to be true to what I've told people. I'm trying to allow us to compete with the Indian <coughs> casinos and in Arkansas, I think if they put it at their racetracks, <coughs> and, and Mississippi. Uh, if by chance, you know, you asked me the chances of passing the bill, if, if, if the will of the legislature is to do what you suggest and, 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 and widen that, uh, I'm personally not against it, but, uh, and, and, but, and I would go with the will of the legislature, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but if somebody offered that amendment and it would kill the bill, I would, I would, I would oppose the bill. Mr. Martin, we I haven't really the talked bill. about Yes, sir. The revenue, and should it be dedicated? We've heard education, you, you know, hand in hand with that in the past, but uh, should this be dedicated? Well, for, first of all, let me say this. I saw the projections y'all have of 52 to 72 million. I think that's high. That's high. I think we are really looking at somewhere between 20 and maybe 40 million. Uh, it's not going to solve our fiscal problems. Uh, should it be dedicated? I'm, I'm happy to see it dedicated to something like early childhood development. Uh, but I also understand that there's some people that want to dedicate it to, to infrastructure. There's some pe there's a lot of other other worthy causes, and believe me, all you have to do is put the money up on the table in Baton Rouge, and everybody wants part of it. So it's got, you know uh, we will have that discussion uh, again. There will be some legislators that are opposed to any further dedication of funds. Uh, uh, you know if. if it, it, it's going to come down to the will of the legislature. I'm, I surely would. I, I can say this to you: there will be money to address the problems that we have in dealing with with problem gam gamblers. Okay, but let me ask you this too, Mr. Hall. If you, if you do <laughs> legalize it, would it be easier to regulate? <laughs> then is that a better uh, a better way to do it? I don't think. I think what you're going to do is exacerbate the situation. Uh, you can increase uh, the 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 field and not increase the problems and. And, and I'm sorry, you're not going to generate enough money to, to overcome um, uh, the the cost that's going that it takes to fix. So the if we don't, but so if we don't pass it, we we just have sports gaming here that's totally unregulated, and we still have the problems. And 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 you and, and I respect your opinion. I'm just telling you, it's here. It was here when I got to the legislature, and it's an industry that I believe it's the only industry I know of in the state that we do everything we can to make sure they don't succeed. And and this is just a, a way to create an amenity that will allow us to compete on an equal. Well, just just let me offer an uh, alternative perspective. And that is, when we do a, a budget note for different bills, uh, we ought to look and see what they, the costs are, not just the benefits. And when we're saying that gambling in the state adds $900 million to the bottom line, and we know studies from the Picard Center and Baylor University show that there's likely a $900 million cost on the other side in social costs, and that's well documented. And, and that's just for the pathological gamblers, not dealing with the problem gamblers, which number just under 200,000 in the state. We're setting ourselves up for, ju we're just moving the problem around. We're moving things around without really addressing uh, some of the issues. And, uh, and I can tell you, I think that the state has a lot more promise than just gambling as an industry. And I think we ought to be pursuing that aggressively in developing jobs here that will give a future for our children. Let me ask you this, uh, Ms. McNeil. Uh, um, Self-exclusion, uh, some of those programs, uh, your involvement, or what's done with that? Uh, we do. Uh, State police is, is part of that. We man, we monitor and and handle that program. But uh, we've chosen in in the past, and I know because of the topics lately of in the new recent news, we don't talk about the program itself, uh, how it's done, just for the confidentiality for the people involved, because we want people to feel safe that they can come to our program and 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 get the help they need for themselves. So that's just kind of the stance we've taken. Can you explain how it works, though? It, it how it works, you know, realistically is you come in. 
to our uh, to one of our, our um, departments and you sign up and and we go from there. I don't want to get too in involved in it because uh, it's just the process we'd like to keep in house. So. And these are people with gambling or addiction problems. Yes, sir. That's correct. All right. I want to go uh, uh, out to our uh, both of our counselors who work in this uh, so much, Matt, and also Janet. As you're hearing all this, I know you have questions, and so <coughs> Janet, let me begin with you. Your question for the group. Um, so, I, I, of course, I, I'm multidimensional myself with the take on this. I I do know that I've also been looking at different states as. Um, Major McNeil talked about with who's already having sports betting in there and the regulation and the monitoring that can go on um, similar to when Louisiana if we look back at histor history we had gambling before gambling was legalized here um, and so I, I think having the component of the state police and the way that Louisiana has handled looking at um, addressing if we're going to bring in gambling, then we're going to take in some dedicated funding to help our people with treatment and, and helpline and resources. Um, and, I, and I think that's unsaid in many states that I talk to. There, there are a lot of states that have no funding and no help whatsoever. There's a question in what you're asking. And right? so my question is, Senator Martini, is it gambling what we're looking at? Of course. Okay. Um, of course and, it's and gambling, so and, and, and some, I, some people, before I got there, uh, addressed it as gaming, I guess, to sure. distinguish because there was a constitutional prohibition. Now, right. I'm not going to get into that debate with you, but no, it's here. No, I... It's, I, it's I, here, and, and, and we're dealing with it. I, I'm not going to... Look, I respect what this gentleman has to say. I know, I know where his heart is. Uh, I mean, you know, my point is this. It's here. Mm -hmm. well, sports betting is here. Whether we legalize it, don't legalize it, regulate it, or don't regulate it. But I suggest we, we, we can gain some benefit by doing it. We can employ more people in the industry to compete. with. Uh, look, I've been on the radio probably 10 times, and every time they go to a commercial uh, talking about this, I got Beau Rivage, the Imperial Palace, the uh, Golden Nugget. Come to Mississippi. We've got rooms. We've got shows. You know. You know, and, and believe me, they don't want us to pass this law. law. So uh, you know, I'm just sure. saying it's here. It y you can call it what you want. We have a great we're, we're great wordsmiths in the legislature and, and saying, oh, it's really not right. this. It's something else. But right. uh, and I know. think we all inherited that. That's what I understand too. Is that um, I'm always having to change it out to gaming or gambling. Who I'm speaking with, and mm -hmm. and I and I just think that one of the things that I hear from all of you, if, un, unless I've got it n gotten it wrong, even Senator, is that everybody's about taking care of people mm -hmm. in this. I that you're not so. about, let's just go ahead and bring it in and um, allow it and sign off to it without um, putting um, actually infrastructure in areas of education. Well, I think um, we have a problem that we can't ignore and, right. and you're doing a good job and and you know I, and we just can't turn our heads away and s turn our heads and say well if we don't do it it's going to go away it's not going away the bookmakers and and the, and the offshore people they hope that they hope they kill my bill so i, I understand am I hearing there would be money going toward compulsive uh, that that will um, well, that, that will be assuming I get the votes to do it, but that would be my intention. Obviously, okay. I'm surely not going to ignore the problems that these ladies have to deal with every day. Right, that's something. Um, and Matt, we have you, some big problems you have, to deal you sort with. Right. Asked that. What yeah. is your question, Matt? My question is, you know, I deal with them every day, mm -hmm. and I've seen families torn apart. I've dealt with suicides. You know, I've it's so many things that's breaking up and dividing families. And to respond to what you said. We have more adolescent gamblers than we have adult gamblers. Absolutely. We do. Statistically, we do. You know, so I'm, I'm about what you're saying. As long as we are meeting these needs and recognizing that we have a serious problem here in this state with gambling, anybody else who may have a casino, mm -hmm. make sure we address those problems. And we're saving lives, we're saving families, we're saving jobs. And all a lot of the problems you see in the papers now, blue collar crimes, it's about gambling. Mm -hmm. And right. we need to bring it to the forefront. Yeah, absolutely, Roy. Um, that is a great point. A and I do believe technology is fabulous. Geofencing is very interesting to me. But to hear <laughs> that the problem is even greater among adolescents, it, whenever the government gives its imprimatur to anything, its endorsement, 
you're, which we would be doing here. You're going to have more of it. We just are going to have more of it. We, we are exacerbating the situation. What I never can understand is why, as I've said, part of my question is, in this state, why we can't try to focus on more solid, stable sources to build economic development in our state. Okay. There, like uh, what? We do. Well, how about oil and gas? How, well, it's how, here. Oil and gas. How about here. agriculture? How about health care? How about health care? Well, believe the, me, it's here. The, the, what I'm saying is, but we never give those fields the attention we give the increase. We okay. have efforts at n increasing gambling every, oh, virtually every session. We're usually suing oil and gas interests in this state. What, what I'm saying is, and I'll, I'm not trying to be confrontational about that, we always are focusing on gambling. But ultimately, it's, it's a mirage. It, it won't last. If Texas ever fully legalizes it, the six boats in the shreveport Bossier area are dead. That's, talk about, pun intended, we, that is to me a bad bet. What we're doing in the state, of course people are going to do what they want, but here it's not even adults doing it, Danny. It's but, I, but I think it's disingenuous to suggest that we focus just on gambling every year and we don't focus on health care and we don't focus on agriculture. We, we do focus with all of that. Like it or not, gaming, which came before I came, is a, is a big part of, of, of our budget. You want to get rid of it right now? That's fine. Tell me what you're going to replace it with. Yeah, I can replace it with more agriculture. You're not going to replace it with more oil and gas. And, and, you know, so that's that's no. I'm, that's my point. I, I, so I grant you. I'm only saying to suggest that that every year we focus on gaming. Until this governor came in, every other governor said, "I'm not for. I'm, I don't even bring gaming stuff." And we didn't. They brought. They they would bring regulatory changes. But this is the first. This is an expansion of gaming. I don't. I don't dispute that. Okay, but this is the first time that, in my mind, in, in, in the last 15 years, that an expansion of gaming has had, has had, has had some momentum behind it uh, w without everybody killing it. So. Can I say one more thing? Sure. One of the biggest problems that I find is people are in denial of how bad the compulsive gambling situation really is. You know, I go places and they're like, it, it, it do that? It's, it's like that? Yeah, and I just did a conference where dealing with a lot of social workers that wasn't even aware that you assess people for this. I work closely with state police. You guys are awesome. You, you, when they come in there, you take charge, and they come back and say everybody was great. We need to really recognize that we have problems. Not saying we can't address them and we can't deal with them. We need to deal with them. We need to get off our tucks and, hey, okay, we're going to do this. Let's have this. You know, and coming together, that can happen. Mr. Hall? Well, I would say this, that, um, Senator Martini, I, I've been here, I've only been in the state since June 1st, 2015. But I, I would suggest something that I, I've not yet seen a bill come up about transportation. We have natural gas resources here that if we came up with a comprehensive regional plan on converting cars instead of to electric cars to natural gas propelled cars, it would give a significant boost to our gas industry. And those are some things that we could do and look into uh, that as alternatives to, for development to ex just continue to expand on gambling. You had mentioned earlier that uh, you have a spirited approach to, yes. uh, we're going to see a lot of television advertising, a lot of uh, We don't have those kind of resources of to spend on, on that. And, and of course, when uh, the, the DraftKings and, and, and uh, uh, duel, uh, fan duels come in, uh, they spend a million dollars in the legislature to, to lobby to push for, for passing that, that sports betting bill. Uh, uh, we don't have those kind of resources, but we will organize on a grassroots letter. We will talk to our 1,650 churches uh, about getting engaged and, and engaging our, our uh, lawmakers first, but then engaging in the in a, in a voting in a, in a ballot in a voting booth. Uh, we're going to work with other denominations, and we're going to talk with our our, our friends in, in the Catholic churches, and also the Nazarene churches, and the Pentecostal churches, and we're going to talk about one of the things that. Again, it's not emphasized because we don't have those kind of financial resources. I will tell you, a lot of them are going to address issues. When you talk about the, the problems in the state, our pastors know what is happening because these people are coming and we're having to use our, our, benef our, our benevolence funds, our uh, clothes closets, our food pantries to help these fragmented families that result from uh, problem gambling in our state. And we've got to address that. If we, if we don't think about that, if we don't put our arms out and say, we've got to stop. We're going to create a horrible situation that we'll never get away from. And as far as 
children gamblers, we're already at uh, about an average of 40% from the sixth grade up that are in, engaged in gambling somehow right now. We've got to find solutions to that. And, and again, I contend when we look at what ga gambling adds to the bottom line on the, on the revenue side of the, of the ledger, we need to look at what it takes away from on the expense side. And right now, just for the about 100,000 pathological gamblers we have, it nullifies all the profits that we're seeing in terms of tax revenue uh, that are going into the state coffers. And so, uh, you know, uh, when we start looking at the, all the other problem gamblers, 179,000 that are the problem gamblers, we don't know those costs. But I can tell you, our pastors are dealing with this problem daily. And we're having fragmented families, children, wives. And uh, is there a thing when you saw the, showed the data about who supports gambling mm -hmm. and who doesn't, and you saw that only about 33% of women in any of the age groups supported it? Does it cause you to pause to think why? women don't support gambling the way men do and I can tell you I think a lot of it's because these women are having to deal with no. husbands and fathers. That actually was, was females who bet. Yeah. Well, but that statistic yeah. was females who bet. But, but still, so oh I'm sorry. Yeah, okay I didn't see that. I, I want to ask you a lot very quickly as games. we're beginning to run out of time. Yes sir. What are the resources that you guys uh, are doing? It's almost like a, a not heard about, talking about not being happening but not being heard but how much the resources you put into Ill illegal gambling, illegal betting, the things that state police does. We've done it in the past. Uh, and it, bookies, you it, know. Well, it, it's, to be quite honest, it's, it's hard uh, to go in and, and, and make bookmaking cases in, in the state. It just is for that reason. And so we, we try, we do it as best we can. We've done a lot of dog fighting cases in the past because dog fighting typically is, is that sports betting. Um, but really, uh, we've not done that much in, in the long run on it, probably. So, okay, all right. Do we have time for another question? Richard, uh, brief time for a question here. I was wondering what is being done to educate children? Is there any movement to include some lesson in, in the schools, in these lesson plans about gambling? We have sex education, drug education. What about gambling education in the, starting in the elementary schools? Let her. You want to answer that? <laughs> I'd rather hurry. <laughs> There's actually a program called Kids Don't Gamble, Wanna Bet. And it's underutilized in the state of Louisiana. But it's a fairly good program, has good research behind it. So there are some real live programs to be used with um, the youth and younger generations in the schools. Um, but we just have very few pockets in Louisiana that are doing that. But, but that's one of the programs. There are many programs, actually, um, uh, yes. certainly coming out of Canada and borrowing from Europe and that. So, but that's one that is utilized in Louisiana in a few pockets. You, you well, use it as well. Right. Again, they could be talked about yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I will say this, though, and, and, and I, I, doubt, I don't know that they, they, they have a course on that. But that's why the, the big push has come from early childhood education because we seem to worry more about K through 12 and you know the, it's, it's just like building a house. You build that foundation from zero to four and you you know and, and if, you, if you start them off on the right path and obviously uh, hopefully they'll hopefully they'll move on. I don't know of any particular program other than what uh, what Janet's talking about but uh, uh, you know, a lot of it, a lot, a lot of it, a lot of it falls back on the parents too. All right, I mean, panelists, we have time for a brief final comment from each of you. Let's just start with you. Okay. Look, I, I look at it this way. This is this is this is an industry that is operating in Louisiana and is totally unregulated. It's illegal. Our neighbors in Mississippi and Arkansas, uh, they 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 jumped out ahead of Louisiana before the Supreme Court ruled and said if it passes we're gonna do it so all I'm suggesting is my bill will be a way that we can regulate it we can deal with some of the problems that these ladies deal with and and we can compete we have an industry that can compete on an e on a, a level playing field with it, with 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 our neighbors uh, like it or not pass my bill or don't pass my bill it's here and it's gonna be here and the problems we talked about are gonna be here mr. Hall Thank well, you. I would just say that um, we're probably nearing the saturation point in the state for gambling. We're probably nearing that in, in the United States, and you're going to see more and more of this. Resources are just going to shift around and not uh, and not produce growth and not produce uh, growth that benefits the state. And so, um, again, m my point is, 
uh, when you do a budget note um, for the state legislature and you say this is going to add $900 million to the bottom line, I want to make sure we're being honest about that and looking at the other side of the ledger and saying it's, it's adding $900 million to cost as well. Okay, Elizabeth? Um, I think that there are, sports betting is a very interesting topic right now in Louisiana. Um, I think Louisiana, there are a lot of factors that make it of a lot of interest to people, at least um, going by how much feedback I get whenever I write about it. Um, a lot of people in Louisiana are big sports fans between the Saints, Pelicans, LSU. Um, also, there is that element of Mississippi has it, why can't we? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that there's going to be um, a big push, but again, after having watched consistent you know fights over the budget and every time you end up with even if it's a small pocket of money everybody has their designs on it and so I think that that's really where we're gonna see some of the tension come up during the session is um, where should the money be dedicated to if it's dedicated to anywhere and how people um, kind of square that all out okay and Major McNeil uh, you know we simply gonna be ready for it if it's passed uh, the state police is gonna be prepared to you know do the will of the legislature implement it and do what we've done for the last over 25 years, regulate this industry as strongly and as, as um, great as we've done in the past and make sure it's done the right way, so. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we've run out of time in our question and answer segment, so we certainly wanna thank our uh, panelists tonight, uh, Senator Martini, Mr. Hall, Ms. Crisp, and Major McNeil for their insight on this month's topic. Now, when we come back, we will have a few closing comments. Well, Andre, interesting conversation. I think yes. this is going to be a topic that's going to be certainly uh, hot during the legislative session. I can't wait to hear all the conversation around it. It, it was composed tonight, but we had people from very different viewpoints. Absolutely. Giving their opinions. I, I'm actually thinking now maybe Daniel Tiger's neighborhood, Mr. Rogers, should have yeah. something about <laughs> gambling. And, Jane, you know, we're talking yeah. about early childhood education. And I think I agree with Elizabeth that there's going to be a lot of uh, discussion about where whether that money should be dedicated or not. Right, right. Yeah. All well, right. this all the time we have for this edition of Louisiana Public Square. We encourage you to visit our website at lpb.org slash public square. While you're there, watch additional interview clips. You may also comment on tonight's show by clicking on the Join the Conversation tab. We'd love to hear from you. That's right. Next month, Louisiana Public Square dives into another topic that has captured the headlines. Since 2010, Louisiana has not executed any convicted death row inmates because of the state's inability to obtain the drug used in the procedure. The state attorney general says there are legislative workarounds. Meantime, two lawmakers will be proposing a bill to abolish the death penalty. So join us in April for an exploration of the debate from both sides. And thanks for watching. Thank you. Good night. For a copy of this program, call 1-800-973-7246 or go online to www.lpb.org.